We have interviewed so many great people in the fold-out chairs, but today a cult hero. David Wolfman Williams, welcome to the fan. Thank you, Vossi. Cult hero. Cult. Wolfman. Yeah. Still recognised everywhere? The beard's uh, there, not quite as wild as it's at its best. It's pretty thick though, it was very wrangly when I first came out. Yes. It's got a little bit more flavour to it now. Now my, Holds more food too. My first really probing question is, you went through a planking phase. <laughs> you went planking you know mad. About you planked my car is here it, at Brookvale. Is Brook the dead still there? What was the story? <laughs> um, You're just weird. Yeah, that's probably the easiest answer. Truth be told, though, I had a um, I had a little segment with Triple J at the time, and they brought they were bringing they were trying to get more sports people on, and they had people come on to to um, show them a talent that no one knew that they had. So some people went on juggling, other people went on you know, I don't know cooking or something like that, or showing their skills. And I had nothing, so a friend, of mine, a friend of mine came up with planking that yes. some guy in South Australia picked up. And then on the Friday we did the segment, he's the Dr. McDougall, who was the, the host, said, all right, we have to set this up. You have to do a post-try celebration and do a plank. Right. And then lo and behold, on Sunday out here, got yeah. a kick off Oldie. Oldfield kicks. Oh, he's picked it. He picked David Williams up beautifully. David Williams goes all the way. Try number two for the Wolfman. Straight down the guts. Had 20 metres and didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and then basically the plank happened. That's beautiful. That's I've been apologising ever since. <laughs> That's it. Yours, Wolfman, is an amazing career. Yet it's only 103 first grade matches. But I look at your junior career. You were born to play for Parramatta. You never play a first grade game for Parramatta. You better no. tell us the story. Your dad's always been involved with Parramatta. Your brother John makes his first grade debut for Parramatta. But there's no Parramatta first grade for David Williams. No, it's um, it's much like a lot of feeder uh, players for Para coming through the grades. Um, I had a horrid run. You thought my injury list was bad playing first grade. It was actually horrid at, Man uh, at Para as well. So I, in my last year there, I was coming off. I had two hand surgeries a couple of years earlier, and then I was coming off. 27 subluxations on my shoulder, so it was shot. And then through the year, I was just about to play that out, and that was going to be the end of my career. Um, going to figure out another career That's in it. graphic oh, design. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Wow. Uh, during the season, that was going to happen. And then I was going to play out the year, have the surgery at the end of the year, and then that would be it. And then Crusher Cleal gave me a call and said, you still want to play first grade? How about coming over to Manly? Spoke to my coach at the time, or assistant coach, it was Joey Grimer and basically gave him the rundown. He goes, mate, go for the surgery, go give it a good run. So had the surgery the next week, missed the grand final, the boys won, but I ended up winning the next year, which was probably better. <laughs> now, the, the tie, you know, you, your brother, John, very good player, John, across a number of clubs, but started off at Parramatta. Yep. Your dad, that decision that could have been the end of the career, was that, a, was that a family decision or was just you? You thought, I'm just not destined to make it? No, there was nothing else doing. Had a horrid run with injuries. Um, if that lifeline from Cleo didn't come out, I was yeah, done. That was just it was just how the how the cookie was going to crumble, so to speak. I look at your uh, career. You, you score in 2009. You made your Origin debut. You score a try on debut for New South Wales. Um, 2009, the first time you played for City, you scored a try on debut. The previous year, 2008, you scored a hat trick on debut for Australia. What happened at club level? You didn't. You waited till your second game to score your first try. Why didn't you score on debut? Uh, I blame Darbs for that, for running me down, but I think it had something to do with me being too excited and not knowing enough about football to, to learn how to fence someone. <laughs> I'm not a footballer, I never was. It's just the funny side of it, just looking back at all the stuff that I actually did. Mm. Um, and definitely all the mistakes, but just not knowing the game that well, mm. especially the start out, just headless chook type stuff. But can you take us, you know, you're, you're saying this, but you're a grand final winner that first year, 2008. Take us back to that night. Like you, you must have had to pinch yourself. Like, when, when are you going to wake up from this dream that there you are on a night where you're white Melbourne, you know, so many great things happened. It was just an amazing occasion. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> um, I think one of the things I remember from it was just being, having the the whole time because Robbo scored three tries and I hadn't hardly touched the ball. Mm. So I just had to make sure I put one down to keep the level at least reasonable or respectable. But no, exactly right. That was, um, things just went right. We just, it was kind of like a feeling in the, in the camp and stuff like that, that everything was just going to go our way, not through anything else, just by belief. Everything was going well. A few laughs going on in the huddle beforehand. Everything was just excitement. That end of year, I, I called your test debut up in Townsville against uh, Papua New Guinea. Hat trick for Australia. I mean, that's a, a great feat in its own. What was it like pulling the green and gold on for a bloke who doesn't know football? <laughs> that, that you know, six months early is a, is a nobody. Mm. It was uh, it was good. 
Oh, there we go again. I don't know. What, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I know that. Um, I know that when I got the um, got the news, we were um, we were heavy into a, at least half a dozen beers at the time, probably even double the dozen. But um, Zorba gave me a call. My phone was dead. Um, didn't really care about it at the time. And a few of the boys came up and said, "You need to take this call, Zorba. You've you've made Australia. Congratulations." I thought everyone was taking the piss. Pushed them all out of the way. Beat it. Give me another beer, type thing. Until Zorba got on the phone and goes, if you hang up on me, I swear I'm going to come over there and sit on you. <laughs> so <laughs> I took the call. Wow, anyway, yeah, we went downstairs after that. And I think I was more ashamed of my face at the time because Robbo had sheared me 12 hours earlier. He was absolutely sick of it and he did not have a steady hand. Oh. So I ended up coming out with all sheer marks across my neck, no beard, mullet for a haircut. Yes. So not the best image to go <laughs> to start off your career with, but at the same time, it was... Um, very humbling to see how everyone else worked. Mm. Uh, I think that experience for me definitely didn't help until later on in my career when I started to realise exactly what was needed and required when you're watching Billy Slater train, um, all the guys that were in the emus, how they trained mm. as well, because I spent most of my time with them. Yeah. Watching Ronnie Palmer take you through some stuff and just getting that experience. So it was really humbling to see how all that worked. And I think that helped my game later on in the career. Definitely not in the first couple though. Earlier this year, we had Sean Timmons in the fold-out chair, just you know, gobsmacked by the injuries that he went through and the operations and surgeries. Now blow us away with your <laughs> story, your medical history. My medical history. Yeah, so like how, how many surgeries Injuries that sideline you to the point that we already know, you know, you may not have even played first grade, but no, my worst. Way. So, one on the knee, this is in no order one on the knee, two on the hand, one on the neck, and that's not the break. Um, two on that shoulder, one on that shoulder, and then the back's had its issues, but no surgery yet. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Let's talk about the neck. Battle of Brookvale game 2011. Everyone remembers the fight, it's been lost in the, the telling of the story. You break your neck. Mm. that night. I mean, what is it like being in that position when someone says, well, actually, you've, you've broken your neck, David? That was, um, that was more daunting than anything else because I originally thought I had a stinger. So if you don't know what a stinger is, it's um, where you basically stretch the nerves on your shoulder, fire goes down your arm, it's no big deal. You can, you can you know, be a bit of rest and rehab and you're good to go. So when I did it, first and foremost, like I had that burning sensation down my right arm and that's when I was yelling out to Billy, does not move and he, he did the... He did the, um, he thankfully heard me, so he held everything into place. And then as I was getting stretched off, I couldn't feel a thing. Not, not in a bad way. Yeah. Not in a bad way, just like no pain, yeah, everything's sure. fine. You know, I'm getting stretched off for a stinger. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. It wasn't until I got to the hospital when they confirmed it, and then right then and there, then you're thinking the worst, you know, can I play again? Not only that, what am I, what's the rest of my life gonna be? But um, that wasn't as bad um, as some of the other injuries I've had because Thankfully, it was all, um, it, nothing was compound, nothing was complicated. Mm. So, end up getting away with a lucky one compared to some other guys. Yeah, the beard. <laughs> does the beard have a story? If the beard could talk. If the beard could talk, the beard does talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it says, oh, what it says. I can't say that on camera. <laughs> uh, but it became you, you know, it was part of your popularity. The, the Wolfman caught on so quick. And as I say, for a manly player to be loved, it is rare. Yeah, it, is. it is rare. <laughs> it's very rare. The beard opened the beard's doors for you. Loved. I don't think the from beard. here down wasn't loved. It was just that section there, <laughs> and then maybe the eyes brought it home. Um, no, the beard. The beard took off on, on its own. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but the whole reason it came about is because I used to work up at the Leagues Club because I was only on minimum wage coming to Manly. I didn't expect to play reserve grade, so I had to get a job to make ends meet. And then the lady there at the time had a little bit of scruff. Now, nothing like this at all. You can see straight through to my chin. It basically looked like, I don't even know, like pulled some fluff off, bum fluff from somewhere and just let it go in the wind. So I went to the, the went to get a job and she goes, listen, you can keep the beard, but you've got to keep it kept or like, you know, maintain it. Otherwise you've got to keep, be clean shaven. Coming from someone that hates HB. Shaving, it stayed. And then it grew into, a, it grew into its old persona, own persona. The great stories on the fan uncovered. <laughs> there you go, the beard and then, if I could say if there's a positive to the negatives of the injuries through your career, in some ways that's led you to your post-career um, profession. Now you're a trainer and you're able to give out, you know, real experience, real life stories and experience in, in inspiring young athletes dealing with injuries. Is that fair comment? Given my experience and my history of injuries, that seemed to be the easiest way to go. I don't know what I know from 
anything to do with courses or learning mm. that way. It was all from how I rehab myself yeah. and bringing other people back. So I'm training kids now to hopefully get into those habits. So if, I, if they know what I know now at their age, hopefully they can avoid all the injuries going through. It is a great story. Uh, I mean, it is incredible. I mean, you know, we've spoken to Gerald Yalgi and setbacks and all. You had setbacks, but you kept on bouncing back. And I think you, you need to be really proud of what you achieved as a rugby league player and now getting on with your life. Thanks, buddy. We'll work on it. Yeah, but as for plaking the car, I, can I, I'm gonna, in fact, I'm going to ring the police if it happens again, I tell you. Where's your car now? David Wolfman, <laughs> Williams on the fan.